Sunday School at Home. Today we're doing Lesson 3 of 4 of King Solomon. Let's review what we've learned in the last two lessons. God gave Solomon wisdom to lead his people. Wisdom is more than just knowledge. It's choosing to do what is right and good with what we know. How do we know what is wise? Wisdom is fearing the Lord and obeying his word. In the Bible today, we will learn about the time when the Israelites built a place for God to live so he would be with them. God led his people to build a temple where he would dwell with them. Match the people with their homes. There may be some that don't have a match, so you might have some that are left over. Did you have some left over? Who would live in the temple? In the book of 1 Kings, chapter 6 to 8, in our orange section, the history section, we learn about the Israelites building the temple for God. Solomon was the king of Israel after his father, David, died. God made Solomon very wise. Solomon began to build a temple for the Lord. Solomon ordered thousands of workers to help build the temple. They cut cedar logs and stone blocks. They laid a foundation and built the outside of the temple. God blessed the temple and promised Solomon, if you obey my commands, I will keep the promise I made to David. I will live among the Israelites and I will not abandon my people. The temple was built in seven years. It was beautiful. The cedar paneling inside the temple was carved with ornamental gourds and flower blossoms. Solomon overlaid everything inside the temple with pure gold. He hired men to make bronze furnishings for the temple such as bronze bowls for holding water. When the temple was complete, Solomon moved the Ark of God from its place on Mount Zion to the new temple in Jerusalem. Solomon gathered the leaders of Israel. As the priests moved the Ark to the most holy place in the temple, King Solomon and the leaders sacrificed sheep and cattle to the Lord. When the priests came out of the temple, a cloud filled the temple. God's glory was in the cloud. Solomon turned to speak to the Israelites. Praise God, he said. God promised David that his son would build a temple. God kept his promise. Solomon stood and prayed with his hands spread out toward heaven. There is no God like you, he said. Then Solomon thought about the future. He knew Israel would sin and make God angry again. So Solomon asked for forgiveness, and he asked God to hear their prayers. When Solomon had finished praying, he encouraged the Israelites to love and obey God. And the people returned to their homes joyful because God was good to them. The temple was a place where God was good with his people. The people could go there to make sacrifices and worship God. Today, when we trust in Jesus, he is with us wherever we go. We can look to him for forgiveness and help. What did God promise to do if Solomon obeyed him? God promised he would be with me and the Israelites and not leave them. How long did it take Solomon and his workers to build the temple? Mm. 
uh, let's see here. I believe it took not one, definitely not two. I think it was more than double three years. Ah, oh, yes, it took seven years to build the temple. What did Solomon ask God to do when Israel sinned? I knew my people would sin, so I asked God to hear their prayers and forgive them. Does God need a house to live in? I don't think God really needs a house. Can you imagine how big that house would need to be? I mean, God is everywhere, which would mean his house would have to be as big as the world. Besides, if he wanted a house, he could make a really good house. No, God didn't ask us to build him a house because he needed it. He asked us to build it because he knew we needed to see that he was close to us and always with us. How does God dwell with Christians today? My mom says that Jesus lives in my heart, but I think that would be gross. There's a lot of blood in there. The Bible does say that when Jesus went back up into heaven, he would send us a gift. In Pentecost, we learn about that gift. Jesus came as wind and fire in Pentecost. He wasn't actually wind and fire. That's just what the Holy Spirit felt like. Just like Jesus didn't live in the temple, Jesus doesn't live in our hearts. But his Holy Spirit is around us, in us, and with us all the time. I'm glad he isn't in my heart getting all covered with, in blood. So even though he isn't physically here, God is with me all the time. That's right, Pablo. So if God is with me, and you, and everyone, why does the Bible say that someday he will return? How can you return if you're already here? That is a great question, Pablo. God sent his Holy Spirit so that we would have wisdom, and hope, comfort, and help while we're living here on earth. But he promised us more than that. He promised that when Jesus died and rose again, he would come back someday to earth. When Jesus comes back as king of his kingdom, he will actually be here and we will actually get to live with him. While we wait for that day, we have the Holy Spirit who's here with us and never leaves us. That's pretty cool. I'm glad that God made all these plans and knows everything. It is very cool. What if I build a temple? Do you think God would come live in it? Well, I guess he would be living in it if he's already here all the time in us, around us, and with us. But I think building a temple would be a great reminder that God is with us and that he has kept that promise. Why don't you try building a temple? You can build it out of some building blocks you could build it out of chairs and blankets and pillows, or you could use your recycling and build a temple. If you choose to build one, you could send me pictures of it.
everything. He knows everything in the past that's already happened, everything that's happening right now, and everything that's going to happen in the future. God knew that the Israelites needed a reminder that he was with them. So he led God's people to build the temple. God knew that we would sin over and over again. And so he sent a savior. Let's talk to God and thank him for all his plans. Dear God, thank you for your plan to build a temple so that your people would remember that you are with them. Thank you that you made a plan to send Jesus to die and rise again so that we could also live with your spirit now and you forever in the future. Help us to remember that you promise to always be with us and to keep all your promises. Amen. You may have memorized the first two lines of James 1, 5. This week, try and memorize the third and final line. Do any of you need wisdom? Ask God for it. He is generous and enjoys giving to everyone. So he will give you wisdom. James 1, 5. Do any of you need wisdom? Ask God for it. He is generous and enjoys giving to everyone. So he will give you wisdom. James 1, 5. Thanks for joining us again today. We'll see you next week for our monthly worship Sunday.